So Today we're going to be learning about using liquid watercolors. And they come in a tube. They might look a little bit like this. And uh, they squeeze out of the tube. So you don't have to add water to make them work. However, a lot of times um, you do need to add water for different effects. Um, there are some colors in the box that might look pretty similar, but they're different. For example, this one is called rose and this one is called red. So just good to know because um, the labels are a little strange on them. So when you put them away or when you decide what color you want, just um, make sure you look at the label itself so you can see what is the color you actually want. So for today, um, you'll need three different size brushes, one large, one medium, and one small. And you will need a paint palette like this and just a small cup of water over by the sink. And what you'll be doing is mixing two different colors together. So you're going to, in this tray full of paints, you're going to choose two colors that you think would be interesting together. So I'm going to choose opposite colors. You don't have to, but you could if you like. Um, and you're going to squeeze out just a little bit of each color into your tray. You don't need very much of this um, watercolor because it's very, uh, it has a lot of pigment to it. This is sort of a golden yellow, so it looks a little different than the lemon yellow, which is brighter. Um, you're going to leave one tray empty and then do your other color. I've got purple and gold. It might look like Viking colors, but I swear it was just random. Okay, <laughs> now we're going to move on and we're going to be um, doing what's called a wash. And uh, also for today you'll need a piece of paper toweling. It's very important when you're working with color to control the amount of water that's on your brush. So um, what we're going to be doing first is um, a wet on wet wash. So what I want to do is first, um, you don't have to do this on a normal project, but because this is an experimental page, you're going to take part of your project and draw with a line, and it doesn't matter what type of line, just an area where you're going to try this first technique. So I just take a corner and draw a little area. And then the first step to making a wet on wet wash is to wet your brush with just clear water. And then I'm going to paint the water inside just this area. It's nice to use Sharpies because they do not fade or bleed into any of the water and the colors will stay in place. So once this is nice and wet, with water. I'm ready to apply the color and you can choose either one of your colors. Don't mix them yet. And what you're going to do is grab a little color by just mixing a little water with what you have. You don't want to use up the whole amount of paint, just part of it. And then I'm going to come in and apply that to the wet surface. And I'm going to make part of it pretty solid and then I'm going to experiment with making the other one dash lines or dots so you can see how it spreads. So you should see it kind of fuzzing and changing as it goes. So that's the first technique I'd like you to try. Now the next thing I want you to be aware of is that when you're rinsing your brush, um, you want to use small amounts of water when you're using watercolor if at all possible to avoid getting very dirty with the water. So um, that's where your paper towel comes in handy. You want to first try to get as much of the paint off as you can. This is why you'll need several paper towels. It's also uh, handy sometimes to have a box of Kleenex close to you um, because that's very useful sometimes as well. And now I can rinse and then dab again. So the water did turn a little bit purple but not, not too much. Okay, so now I'm going to try a different technique. I am going to make a new section here. And inside this section, I'm going to create a spiral with my pen. 
And um, I'm going to be combining some colors in this area. And so I'm going to get the brush a little bit wet now. And I'm going to wet one side of the spiral with one color. And then again, you want to dry off your brush, get a little more water, and then let's take the other color, mix a little bit of that. And just to kind of check out this color, make sure things are going well, I'd like you to try the next technique, which is um, actually it's dry paper with a wet brush. So we call that wet on dry. And just do a wiggly line in the background somewhere. Just to kind of check it out. Now notice how bright it is. That there's a lot of pigment in this paint. Um, so now you can take that same wash that you just did but wet down the side first. So I wet down the other side of the spiral. So I'm just sticking with one side. And it's a little bit lighter um, because you have a little more water in there. Rinse the brush. Again, you blot it out on your paper towel. And then I'll grab a little purple. Put it on the other side. And what I'm looking for is for the colors to sort of blend together in the middle. And I'm going to do that by dropping just a little bit of water where they meet. I'll just take the little clear water. And that's going to make the colors sort of blend. Because I chose colors that are opposite, it's going to be a little more neutral, more like a brown or a gray. Okay, I'm done with that experiment. The next thing I'm going to try, um, I'll need some stripes for. They don't have to be straight lines. This is a very important technique um, because it shows you how to change the amount of pigment that you're using and it's called a graded wash. And to do a graded wash you can either do it with wet paper or you can just use rather wet paint. But what you're trying to do is get one side of the stripe to be brighter than the other side. So you're just going to start with one color. And this might take some experimenting so that's why I have you make several stripes. So I'm going to start out with a little bit deeper purple here. And then what I want to do is um, as I come further out, there's two ways you can change um, the lightness or darkness. Okay, one way is to rinse your brush just a little bit and then rub it along the edge to get rid of some of the water. So that's taking some of the pigment off your brush. So you see it's getting a little bit lighter as I go. Okay. Another way is just to stretch what's on your brush. By stretching I mean that as you pull along with this it's going to naturally get a little bit lighter because your brush is getting drier. And then keep in mind that some of the pigment is on the paper. So if I rinse my brush right now and dry it up pretty good this last little bit I can probably just use what's on the paper. So I'm going from dark to light. Graded wash it's called. Um, so that's another one I'd really like you to experiment with. Okay, the rest of the page is yours to try out different techniques on. So you could try different ways of mixing. For example, you could do a line of uh, just wash that's water and then you could make some of it purple and then I would like to try this technique where you kind of drop the paint on, rinse your brush, maybe do a little of your other color, try mixing the two colors. Another thing you could try out is a dry brush technique. That's where you try to get your brush fairly dry. Pick up just a little bit of water and then try to get it so it's just real wispy doesn't show up very good with the yellow so I'll try it with the purple so you can see it better. If you do run out of paint during 
uh, last time you can just grab your tube and put a little more on there. So this 